Hello, everybody. How are you? Really, how are you? I'm Theron. Welcome to Minecraft LAN Party. We are down in my little mine area. And let me show you something. I said I wanted to improve the access. There's a skeleton dying over here. Why did he die? Not like there's lava there. That was really weird. Maybe he was in the lava and he burned. All right, <clears throat> as I was saying, <laughs> I said I wanted to improve the access to my little uh, spawner area over there. And look at this. I made a little tunnel, took a little bit of stairs over there, but it flows right in. Ta-da! So this is the little cave area that I used to go up and around over there. No longer necessary, and I may, in fact, tear it all out. So I added uh, some space back here, as I said I was thinking of doing. So I have two pumpkin patches, I have two farm patches, and I have two sugarcane patches. So I could actually, in a relatively short period of time, farm up a fair amount of resources, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've got chickens over here. Got a lot of chickens. Let's do something about that. Huh. That area of effect attack is convenient in cases like this. Ugh. Except having the entities, having the chickens be able to push me around is not super convenient. So I'm quite a bit bigger than they are. Oh, goodness. There we go. Huh. Ooh, I got a lot of eggs there. And my egg hopper's full. Okay, so. I moved feathers down here. Um, I've got uh, a couple things here of tradables. I'm not going to be doing any trading on camera. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. But. Spawner. Same, same, same. I, uh, I changed things a little bit here. Instead of putting signs above the carols, I put signs next to it so I can come up here and see, oh, this librarian has my Sharpness 3 book. It's an expensive book. Um, and one thing I did is I gave a score to the clerics. And I came up with a way of scoring them. It's uh, The score runs from 1 to 10. Uh, no one would ever score 1. So I've been going through and clearing out my clerics. That was 6.05. This is 6.1. This is my best at 7.4. Um, he has relatively low flush trade. Don't care about that. Fairly high trades on these. Relatively cheap ender pearls. It's not the cheapest. Um, good glowstone trade. And cheap bottle of enchanting. Not all of those are super important, but I came up with a spreadsheet to sort of score them. I just basically go through and enter in all the appropriate numbers, and it gives me a score, which is kind of cool. Uh, so what I've been doing is, as I've been getting more villagers that I want to keep, um, this guy is 6.45, uh, I have been, uh, I've been killing off the low scoring clerics. This guy, hi, infinity book for five emeralds. Pretty good. Um, most of these guys, mending 22 is still my best mending. Um, looting two. So I don't have ideal trades on, on any of these. This is my, probably my most, you know, efficiency four is pretty good. Because uh, I don't think you can get an Efficiency 5 book. So, these guys are doing their thing. Um, fortune 3 for 16, that's pretty good. 
depth strider sharpness so I said something last time and then I went on to record like a whole sort of another episode and what I said was kind of stupid and this is actually an excellent example right here so let me talk to you for a little bit about confirmation bias so you notice right now the little zombie in the cage is wearing chainmail armor looks like full chainmail armor it looks like a normal regular square head zombie with chainmail armor so every time this thing spawns the zombie inside changes um, I don't know why I suspect that it may have to do with uh, re-rendering like going through the little animation of the spawn because this changes it flares up and then uh, and then it has to re-render the basic spawner cage with the zombie inside and I just noticed you can't see the bars opposite they're not visible they're invisible anyway they don't get rendered hang on a second so I was noticing that occasionally it shows a zombie villager and I convinced myself Oops, that uh, what was inside that spawner influenced what spawned next out of the spawner and I did and I so I so I called that science I was like oh and I just was like spawning a bunch of things going and looking saying oh a normal zombie oh look I get normal zombies out of it of course that's the most common and there's no coincidence there but I was occasionally I would have a zombie villager inside the cage and then a zombie villager would spawn. So I convinced myself and I think I said on camera that I think that what's in there influences what spawns next. Even though I had a couple of instances that clearly disproved the, the hypo hypothesis that I had stated. And I realized afterwards that was like oh i called that let's do some minecraft science and that wasn't science it wasn't even close it was bad science it was bad minecraft science so here's what we're going to do i'm going to show you something right now zombie with chain mail so i went and i made a little spreadsheet and i did that a bunch of times over a hundred times and look there's no zombie with chain mail inside here nope not at all nowhere to be seen because and this white right, right here this evidence that I just collected disproves the hypothesis I would have to modify the hypothesis now to to something else and test that and I didn't do that before last episode and in the episode that I recorded that I'm not even gonna bother editing I did that and that was bad so now zombie looks like another square head zombie wearing full leather armor let's see what we get now we might get a zombie with armor it's entirely possible oh look he, a zombie with armor so confirmation bias is a bias that one adds to observation of data it causes them to choose data and accept data as evidence that supports the hypothesis so if you cherry pick your data to meet your hypothesis that's essentially a very formal version of confirmation bias I was paying attention to observations that matched my hypothesis and I was ignoring observations that did not and that is not good so here we have a square head zombie holding a sword So I ran over a hundred. Oh look, there's nobody in here with a sword. No, it's a little baby zombie. Die. Um, so, full on normal zombie. So, I just had two observations that disproved my hypothesis and I have yet to come up with a new theory other than I think, oh look, T 
two normal zombies here with shovels, one of which is enchanted. Nice. Uh, so, I think it just randomly, when it, oh look, more leather armor. Uh, this is actually a really good run, because most of the time it's just normal zombies. Nobody's wearing leather armor. I've got somebody in gold pants and shoes. These brand new kicks. So, anyway, I think what's going on is that when it decides to draw the spawner, it has to come up with a zombie to put inside the spawner, and it randomizes the zombie with the same routine that it uses when it actually spawns the zombies. And as a result, you get... So this matches, right? So that was a uh, normal zombie. I got two normal zombies. But you get normal zombies like 80% of the time. And now I got a guy in gold armor. Will I get somebody with gold armor? I might. There's a chance. But no, I did not. I got four norms. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to do this quick little thing um, and sort of show that I'm pretty sure that the spawner, what goes on inside the spawner, other than basic mob type, has no impact on what the mobs that actually come out of it are. Unfortunately. There's somebody with a shovel. Uh, so I think it's just random and there's no correlation. I have data to back it up. Well, hello, look, another cleric. Maybe I convert you. How much gold do I have? I don't know. Um, whoa, he's got a punch on him. Try not to hurt you, dude. Oh, he's being annoying. Okay. I think I explained. I, I use the uh, the axe when I want to target my my attack, make a slightly more surgical attack. Hey, dude. Okay. Okay, I'm going to convert him. You don't need to see it. Boop. Because uh, there's some work to be done in the process. I've already shown it. It's kind of boring. I need some gold. I had to go do some mining because I was running low on gold. Um, still not real great in the gold department here. Uh, let's do this. Boop. And I don't need all nine, so I can do that. Boop. Let's go get an apple. Apples are easy to come by now that I have a farmer villager because they will sell apples for emeralds. Which is super convenient. So I don't even have to go farming oak trees to get that. Okay. And let's put this bar here. Okay. So let's do this guy. So anyway. Um, the only other thing I really wanted to talk about was today is... Wow, that's loud. Uh, so today, I did the uh, MS walk, which I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to. Um, so I did that today, walked five kilometers, 5,000 blocks, if you will, and uh, raised over $1,170, I think it was the, the final amount. Um, the fundraising still continues through June. That's my fundraising deadline. So if you want, if you wanted to contribute to the, the fundraiser, as I said, there's no obligation of any sort, uh, but of course I would be ever so grateful. Uh, I'll put a link to it in the video description. This will go up before, uh, June before the the fundraising deadline um, but if the uh, but yeah so I'll put a link to a page that you can go to and 
Hi. Uh, the link to the page that you can go to and donate to the National MS Society. Um, it's a direct donation. It does not go to me. It goes directly to them. And they use the money to for support programs to help people who have MS and also fund research into MS. So it's a it's a cool um, it's it's a good cause. Let's just put it that way. Um, and I have another fundraising idea for them that I am planning on doing. Um, so there will be other opportunities if you're interested in doing something something nice. But uh, so this is the last I'm going to record something in here, I think, for a while uh, because this is probably getting boring. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time here grinding, grinding this stuff and making emeralds, trading with the villagers. I've got 31 blocks of emeralds, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm still trying to get more uh, librarians because it would be nice to have an Unbreaking 3 book. It would be nice to have uh, Feather Falling. It would be nice to have Sharpness. Like a good sharpness. I think I have a sharpness three. Yeah, I have a sharpness three book here. But it's an expensive sharpness three book, and it would take four of these in order to make sharpness five. Whoops. Put on a sword. Um, I don't have. I don't have a power book. I don't think. For my. We would like to get a power. Another power four book to put on here to get a power five bow. I'd like to get sharpness five on here. Um. So, so I have a little bit of work to do. I guess I could get a couple of these to combine them into a sharpness four and put it on the sword. Hopefully that would work. Um, uh, unbreaking would be nice to have on the sword too. Uh, I do have another sword here that I enchanted with unbreaking, but it has freaking Bane of Arthropods. So I want to try and get sharpness five on here before I try to combine that because the unbreaking is less useful when it comes to um, when it comes to mending so grab these grab some of these and this guy's gonna convert I'm going to level him up here and get his score and then decide whether or not I want to put him into one of the carols uh, because if he's a low scoring cleric I don't even care but if he's a high scoring cleric I want him so anyway so next time I don't know what I'm going to do I'm I have a little time nope I have a little time off uh, I have hi uh, I have to go up to the Bay Area. Uh -huh. um, my dad is in the hospital. He fell and, and fractured his pelvis, which is potentially really bad. He, it sounds like it's a relatively stable fracture and uh, should not be, should not require, oh, oh, you're, you might be good. Uh, should not require surgery. So he should not need a hip replacement to recover from it. Hopefully. That's that's the hope. Um, so. Uh, so I'm going to go up tomorrow. And while I'm up there I won't be able to uh, record. So. That is that. Hi. So. This guy's looking promising, so I may uh, I may swap him out for this guy, who's my weakest scoring cleric. And then I'll continue. I have to do some more mining to get some more gold, uh, and then I have to find another project, um, like like maybe gold farm. That would be useful. Uh, I have more work to do in the Nether. I have a lot more work to do in the Nether and the Nether fortress. And, uh, and then still haven't found a few things like I haven't found a Mesa biome, haven't found a Ice Spikes biome. So there's some of that stuff that I need, uh, need some help with. So, or I need to spend some time doing. So I may work on that while I'm away. 
uh, this coming week. And then uh, hopefully when I get back, I can record something with uh, Chihuahua Power G on uh, on uh, on Clancy Land or uh, yeah, hopefully. So we'll see. So anyway, I'm gonna be gone for a little bit. This won't post until after I'm back, so I won't be able to edit it in the meantime. But just wanted to update you on my little flub and demonstrate that uh, there is no correlation between what happens inside the cage there and what happens outside the cage. <sighs> Even though that would be really cool if there were. All right, uh, that's it. I will talk to you later. Thank you for watching, and um, I will see you next time. All right, bye.